Here's a disturbing trend that's largely not talked about. Sex trafficking of children and adults pervades the adult film industry while raking in billions of dollars each year. Now, the problem is largely ignored while its impact runs rampant. Now, an ex-porn star turned pastor is fighting to make the porn industry fight human trafficking. There's very little oversight over who exactly is agreeing to or worse, being coerced into filming some of these videos which is why Utah Senator Mike Lee is leading the charge with a bill to require porn websites to verify the age, consent, and identity of all individuals appearing on their platforms or face harsh financial penalties. To better understand how the industry really works to prey on individuals, I'm pleased to introduce a former adult film star who has turned his life around and become a pastor. Now, for six years, he was one of the most famous male performers in the industry, filming more than a 1,000 movies with girls and guys alike, making more than a million dollars before finally walking away in 2012. Joshua Broom is the founder of Finding Hope Incorporated and the host of the Counterfeit Culture podcast. Joshua, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. So as we mentioned, you were a porn star, uh, not really the person we're used to seeing uh, fighting for conservative social issues. How does one go from becoming an adult film star to becoming a pastor? Yeah, I mean, first, I would like to celebrate that the bill that Mike that um, that Senator Lee has been working on is advancing. I had the opportunity to speak at Capitol Hill and be part of the symposium where we actually presented this bill to um, Senator Lee. So I'm, I'm so excited that this is getting some traction. But I left the industry a decade ago. And for me, I thought if I made enough money, if I had enough fame, if I had enough accolades, it would bring me some sense of joy. But I found that it brought me despair, depression, and ultimately nearly suicide. So I left that industry just thinking maybe I can cover this up. Maybe I can run far enough away from this, deleted my social media, deleted my tattoos. And I found that I couldn't cover up very real mental and emotional trauma that caused that was caused by that industry. I have 30 people who I know on a first first name basis over the last 10 years that were in the industry with me that have committed suicide or or have died of overdose. So that's the reality of the people that are in that industry. And for me, a long story really short. I met a girl. I told her how um, how terrible I was. She told me how good God was. And we've been married for six years, and we have three kids. Oh, that's beautiful. And well, that in was your eight experience, years ago, so yeah. In your experience, how prevalent was human trafficking 15 years ago? Did you even realize that it was going on at that time? Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of the things that happens so subtly that when you're in an environment so toxic, you don't really understand what's going on. But that's how people get in the industry more often than not. And it, the sad part about it is a lot of the girls are being trafficked, but they're in this plausible reality based on the shame and guilt that they feel about themselves. So they don't feel like they can leave that situation they're in. So they willingly stay in it and allow themselves to be trafficked over and over again because they don't really see a future outside of that industry from them. And that's how often, like more often than not, that's how they were manipulated to get in the industry. They were ads on social media that, that advocated for modeling and then they would show up right. and they were so used to being manipulated and abused they just said okay and they didn't advocate or say no for themselves well joshua you know we saw during the lockdowns of COVID how porn viewership skyrocketed it leads obviously to more incentive to to traffic unwilling people into the industry you mentioned the bill by senator lee do you feel that it's strong enough to rein in the purveyors of adult videos to end this problem i mean if you, if you look at the data, I mean, the average age of exposure for pornography is 11 years old. 61% um, of first-time porn consumers, they're accidentally exposed. Kids are Googling something for a, 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 you know, a, a chemistry or a biology project, and they scroll down too far, and they see something that they never meant to see, and now they end up in this addiction with this confusion that they never intended to have. And that's the reality that pornography is not something that you have to look for. It's finding you. And that's why we see Pornhub get, being kicked off of Instagram. There's so many, there's 600 cases of child pornography that's linked to Pornhub. And there's exponential cases of people literally being raped and it being put on Pornhub, being monetized for years and years, and no one's doing anything about it because there's not legislation set in place to do anything about it. 
So let me ask you this. As a man of faith, you preach love and forgiveness for those who may have done awful things they regret. And also you address a lot of these issues on your podcast, the counterfeit culture and in your ministries as well. What kind of reaction have you received and what do you want people to learn from your story? Yeah, I mean, the Counterfeit Culture podcast is around a specific verse. So Romans 12, 2 said you're, says that you're either being conformed by the world or you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So there's biblical truth and there what the world says is best. And I would advocate for anyone that whatever has happened to you or whatever you've done, that doesn't have to define what you do next. So many people experience trauma. Maybe it was caused by their own volition, like my case, or maybe something happened to you. Maybe someone manipulated you, someone hurt you, there was abuse, and you see your life through the lens of that pain. And I just want to say, hey, um, you can get help. You can confess to some trusted person, and you can start a journey that's going to lead to healing and happiness, and you don't have to stay stuck where you are. Well, a great message, Joshua Broom. We appreciate you sharing your story with us, and thanks for coming on tonight. Absolutely. It's my pleasure.